Welcome everybody back into Nerd Sesh. As always, I'm Carson Brever and alongside me is Logan Camden. And today we have two very special guests with us. Jason Timp, of course, host of Hoops Tonight, volume legend, friend of the show. Very excited to have him. And the OG Chilltown Hoops, who I'm sure a bunch of you guys have seen on TikTok, another legend. We're going to be playing some trivia, splitting into two teams as we have been doing over these summer months. But first things first gentlemen how are we doing today i'm doing good i can't complain it's good to see you guys it's the first time i've seen you guys since we burnt vegas to the ground back in july <laughs> you know because we just had because we just partied so hard while we were there uh, uh but i have to say in advance my biggest weakness as a human being is names so i'm a little nervous about today i feel like i might get my ass kicked we'll see how it goes <laughs> i'm a big i'm a big fan of nerds i love nerds so i'm i'm really excited about being here 100 this is awesome <laughs> All right. The format here is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward for those who haven't seen the shows before. Split into two teams. I'm going to be taking OG on my team. Logan is going to be taking Jason on his. Logan and I have prepared the questions for the other team. Ten questions per team. We have a loose five-minute time limit per question just to make sure that we don't run away with things. And then that's pretty much all there is to it. So, first order of business, as always, Coming up with some team names. Logan, Jason, do you guys have any ideas there? Team it's all names. you, Logan. I have zero creativity in my body, <laughs> so it's all you, man. It's the same. Uh, no, Logan, you're good at the team names. Dude, I'm trying to come up with a – I don't know. You want to go like uh, Nerds Tonight or something like that? <laughs> nerds collab? Tonight. There you go. Like <laughs> that. That's pretty good. What are you thinking, OG, for us? Bree Hoops. Bree Hoops. I love it. I love it. Perfect. Three, All right. Three hoops. Let's do it. So without further ado, Logan, what's the first question you got for us today? Gentlemen, I'm going to tee you guys up. I'm going to throw you a softball uh, to get the ball rolling here. Uh, I need you to just name five players with six or more rings. Oh, my God. Five players with six All right. Or more rings. Let's okay. start from. Well, let's actually do it all with 60 Celtics to be a little bit fun. <laughs> so Bill Russell has 11. <laughs> John Havlicek has eight. Kuzi has six. Sam Jones, I believe, has eight. And uh, I'm trying to think. Tommy Heinsohn, does he have six? You just want to get everybody? I mean, I mean, you can keep going, bro. There's only like uh, eight more guys. Sam Jones has 10, actually. He has 10. Ooh. Excuse yes. me. That's right. He comes in. Yeah. Oh, and Casey mm -hmm. Jones would also have <laughs> at least eight. Mm-hmm. Who I mean, else? we could keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. He, 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 he's just he's just going with this. He's just going with the Celtics in the '60s. That's that. That's just that. I mean, Robert. I mean, you still you still have you still got a few more, man. Tom Robert Sanders. Already got... mm -hmm. We haven't said Jordan and Pippen, obviously. No, we haven't said Jordan and Pippen. We haven't said Robert Ory. Mm -hmm. um, um, Kerr only has five, right? Kerr's nope, got five. He only, yep. he only has five, six or more. You guys just have three to go. One, which is frankly impossible, and I will lose mm -hmm. my mind live on air if Carson gets it. We don't have we Frank Ramsey with. here, do we? Frank Ramsey is here. Yeah. <laughs> don't forget about Jabbar, too. Jabbar? <laughs> oh, of course. Jabbar, and so. one to go. There's one guy to go. I've never heard of this guy. One guy to go. Let's see. So who the hell is Frank Ramsey? He was the first. <laughs> he was he was the first great sixth man, Jason. He mm -hmm. he actually was the. Oh God, Red oh gosh, the original Dude, sixth man. You might yeah, actually know this guy. This guy was apparently a '60s Celtics too. I've. Okay, it's not Larry Siegfried, is it? Not Siegfried. Okay, this guy. Averaged... It's not. Uh, Bailey Howell got there too late. It's not Mel Counts. He was only with the Celtics for a few years. I'm just this, throwing out all the 60s Celtics. This guy's a seven, uh, seven time champ, played from 56 to 64. I've never heard of him. So it's an early Celtic <laughs> out of those years. So he basically got there when, when Russell got there. Yeah. I also want to say an absolutely disgusting performance uh, from you on this question, Carson. Hmm. Well, I mean, OG's been right there with me. I I'm just... stumped. I'm stumped. Yeah, this last. is going to be a ridiculous one. Yeah, I'm I mean, stumped. Early 60s Celtic, late 50s Celtic as well. Mm. Can I get a position? Small forward, six foot five, mm. from uh, from Palo Alto, California. Oh, Bay Area boy. 
I, I actually do think I will know the name when you say it, but nothing is coming to me right now. So since we already went way over the top with this question. Jungle Jim Loskadoff. I don't know if that's how you pronounce oh, his name. Jungle Jim Logos. Jungle Jim. <laughs> that's his name, Jungle Jim. I got to go I've... do some homework on Jungle Jim. He sounded like he was coattail riding. All right. I got to go do he... some homework on him. <laughs> he hitched himself to the right wagon. I have seen that name. I know that because I know how to spell it. It's L-O-S-C-U-T-O-F-F, right? Yeah, yes, but I, I would not have gotten that off the top of my head. All right. Don't Do you think worry, he Jason, ever dropped not... seven rings in conversation and then everyone was like, get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah. <laughs> if he didn't, if he didn't, that'd be nuts not to. Why would... That's what I'm saying. Every day of his life. I'd I'm be sure walking around. I'd just to carry him around in a little bag with him just to prove it. <laughs> Logan, that's the first. That that would be actually in the introduction of who I am. How you doing? I'm Jermaine. I'm <laughs> It'd be in the introduction. We wouldn't even start the conversation until I said that. 100%. Before we go any further, I have seven championship rings. Just, just so we clear, Jason, before we even start the conversation, that's what <laughs> that's what we're starting with right there. I got seven NBA championships. And you they know used Bill, to call me Jungle Jim. Do you, know, do you know Bill? Do you know Bill Russell? I was on the championship team with him. Yes, I would. Yes, I do know Bill Russell on a first name basis. Yes, I do. I made I, I made Bill Russell. I was there a year before him. Yeah. After the fifth championship, he actually knew my name. <laughs> all right that's a fun way to start off there's nothing i love more than naming the way throwbacks but we're gonna go a bit more modern for you guys who are the last five players who finished second in mvp voting but never in their career actually won the award mm, the last five mm -hmm. uh chris paul's one chris paul correct um let's see is Paige here from 04 Pedro was not second. I believe he was fourth that year. Was it, was it Jermaine? White Neal? Howard in 2011. That's correct, Jason. It's not Jermaine yeah. O'Neal, Logan. Jermaine was third that year, though. You can think a little better than those guys. Those are like two of the weirdest top five MVP finishers. These dudes all make sense that they were on the cusp, but they never got it. Mm -hmm. This is the weird one. I know uh, Jason did a breakdown of this guy the other day. What about Tony Parker? No. Anthony mm. Davis. Not AD, actually. That's an interesting yeah. thought. I think he... What was his best finish? Third. I, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is right. What about Blake Griffin? No, mm -hmm. also finished third, though, and OG is right. Guess. AD mm -hmm. was third in 2018. Mm -hmm. Kawhi Leonard in Kawhi... 2016. Kawhi is correct. Nicely Kawhi done. Is correct. So two more. Mm -hmm. Correct. Two more, and those are the three most recent. So now you go a little mm -hmm. further okay. back. Tony Parker finished fifth in 2012, Logan, so he did have mm -hmm. a top five finish. Mm -hmm. Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd, that's Cook, correct. Jason Cook. And I want to say that was 2002, if I remember correctly. That is correct. Mm -hmm. In fact, lost he to very... Duncan. Lost to Tim Duncan. Mm -hmm. And he very nearly won. 45 yeah. first place votes. And this last dude actually also very nearly won in a pretty weird historically MVP race. Man, T Mac. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not a bad guess. Yeah, mm. T Mac would have been uh, fourth in <clears throat> 02 and 03. Mm -hmm. Finishing the top five in the league MVP votes. And you said it was before Chris Paul, so it can't be Dwayne Wade. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's actually even before Kid. This is the mm. earliest of the last five. And the highest Wade ever finished was third, too. So that's right. Wade was Man, third. Man, um, is it Sean Kemp? Oh, it's not Sean Kemp. You're in the right ballpark, though, now in mm -hmm. terms of era. This guy was in a strange transitional period in the NBA where, like, this season, there really wasn't a clear okay, top so dog it's at all. So it's 1999 then. Yeah, that's correct. Because <laughs> um, there was just a clear top dog every other year mm -hmm. in that decade. Well, um, well done. Okay, 1999. Let's think. So Duncan won MVP that year, didn't he? No, no actually, uh, Carl Malone. Carl Malone won MVP that year. So Right. Um Number two would be. Think about the era. Alonzo Morning. It's Alonzo Morning. That's Logan. a great Bingo. Pass. Nice job, Logan. Bingo. Well nice job. done. Dude. You carried Jason. That's I, once you honed in on ninety nine. I remember he was pretty great that year with the Heat, right, Carson? 
Yep, and that is one of the closest MVP races ever because there really wasn't a top dog. So Malone had 44 first place votes. Mm -hmm. Zoe had 36. Really was pretty darn close. And Duncan had 30. So well done, guys. Team Malone, Malone winning an MVP in 99 is so weird. <laughs> it is very weird. I'm surprised you left Drex out too. Drex in 92 finished second. Exactly. Yeah. He was, yeah, the most recent before Alonzo. Mm -hmm. The one guy that I always remember, Iceman finished second to Doc, and he, and, he, and he finished second to Doc a number of times, and he didn't win it. Yep. All right, gentlemen, I got a very simple one for you. I love breaking it out periodically. We're going to play the nickname game. I'm going to name some famous NBA players' nicknames, and you're going to tell me who they are. We're going to start it out with Microwave. Vinny Johnson. Mm -hmm. Classic. What about Bad News? Marvin Barnes. Yes. What about Jumping? <laughs> Joe Caldwell. Easy money. Okay, what about downtown? Freddie Brown. Brown. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about Mr. Big Shot? Chauncey Billups. Boom. Okay, what about Jay Smoove? Josh Smith. Yes, sir. Yes. Chocolate mm -hmm. Thunder. Daryl Dawkins. Okay, Kangaroo Kid. Oh, this was Billy Cunningham. Yes, it was. Oh, good Lord, Carson. What about Pink <laughs> Panther? Pink Panther. Fun fact, that's also Carson's nickname, too. People have said that I look like the Pink Panther. I had never heard this one before, man. Uh, also a gentleman, Carson, who shares a, a, you know, a descent with you, man. Mm. Oh, like a, he's, a, he's from a Yugoslav? Former mm -hmm. Yugoslavia? Pink Panther. That's a good one. That is a tough one. I don't know. Dino Raja? <laughs> I don't <laughs> better than Dino is this Raja. one of those basketball reference nicknames that's not actually a real nickname? <laughs> Maybe it could be Jason. It, it, it could very well be that. Yes, there are, there are some of those out there. <laughs> yeah. I love, dude. I've read it off on the show before, but Charles Barkley's basketball reference nicknames is the funniest thing. There's literally like twenty of them, and probably eighteen <laughs> are just different ways to say that he was fat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm um, stumped on this one. We'll come back to that one. What about Tough Juice? Tough Juice? Bro, one of Charles Barkley's nicknames on the basketball reference page is the Crisco Kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got that at Auburn. Yes, he did. Uh -huh. <laughs> they were vicious, man. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, at Auburn, he was big. I mean, Auburn and early Philly, Chuck, he, he was big. <laughs> Tough Juice, dude. I actually know this one. Tough Juice. Uh, I think I is... know this one too. I, I know exactly who it is. Actually, I saw him in Vegas. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. I told you I saw him in Vegas. I'm surprised that you. Uh, oh, don't know well, of course, Vegas doesn't exist anymore because we burned it to the ground. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. <laughs> Tough juice. Who did we see in Vegas? Lo Lo I mean, Logan is 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 it a recent guy? Tough so juice? this this guy last 15 years, yeah, and he got himself a uh, he got himself a championship ring. He was injured when they won the title, but he does have a ring uh, in the last 15 years. And then Karan Butler. oh, Karan Butler, it is Karan Butler. I I just said, Karan Butler. Yeah, 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 nice. I saw him walking around the Hilton Resorts World uh, one of the mornings that I was there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. he had a right. supreme backpack on. <laughs> I didn't know Karan was drippy like that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Pink Panther. Hey, Karan Butler, hit. also another one of those guys, too, that like sneaky could outplay some of the best players in the league on any given night. Karan was good. Very, very good. He made the all-star team a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Last guy, Carson, he is a Croatian. A Croatian. I mean, dude, is I don't know. Just... It's Tony Kukoc. Let's the Croatian go, sensation. OG. Absolutely. Sure. OG cooked. I never have mm -hmm. heard Pink Panther for him. That is fascinating, but that's a great nickname. It could be one of those supplemental ones, but I had to use it considering uh, your close ties to the Pink yeah. Panther, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go. All right. I think we're off to a strong start. Gentlemen, since 1990, four colleges have produced multiple number one overall picks. Can you name them? He, mm. You said Kentucky's just obviously one, right? Because John Wall since, 19, since 1990. UNLV with Larry Johnson, Anthony Bennett. Good job. And yes, that's Jason, guess. Kentucky has three because they also have Cat. Yeah, that's uh, right. And I, I would have figured Duke has done it, right? Kyrie and just Kyrie, but who would be the second one? Grant Hill. See the other oh. one. Grant Hill was not the first overall pick. He was the third pick in the draft that year. Kansas gave us Wiggins. Did Kansas give us anybody else? 
All right, so we need two more, right, Logan? Yeah. Oh, no, Paolo. Duke Duke is Paolo and Kyrie. Yes. And, yes, by the way, You're right. Zion and Elton Brand. So Duke has four. Oh, yeah, and Zion. Yeah, okay. That was not our brightest moment there, Logan. He hasn't, he hasn't played basketball in so long. I forgot about him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're missing one. Oh, what year was Danny Manning drafted? Kansas might be right. Danny Manning and Andrew Wiggins. Well, that was in 88. Oh. So close, but yeah, 88. Is it uh, LSU, Shaq, and Ben Simmons? That's exactly right. Well done, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Nice. All right, guys, this is this is a, this is a fun one. In honor of the gentleman who is uh, who I have the honor of sharing my team with today, I need you guys to tell me the five highest scoring Jasons in NBA history. <laughs> highest scoring Jasons. <laughs> highest scoring Jasons. <laughs> I love that. Amazing. Jason Terry. Jason Terry is number one. Jason Kidd. He's the highest scoring Jason of all time. Yes, he is. Wow. Okay. Well, save Jason Terry, play- of course. <laughs> He played Jason Terry. <laughs> Jason Terry played like seventeen years. So yeah, J Kid is number two. Point. From here on, it's sort of a crapshoot. Like Jason Collins isn't here, is he? Oh, I mean, Jason Collins is a good guess. He's uh, top fifteen. There's actually only this really surprised me. I figured it'd be more of a common oh. name. I think there's only fifteen Jasons who've ever played in the NBA. Well, here's an obvious one: Jason. Underrepresented group. <laughs> Very true. Jason Richardson, number three. We How about Jason more. Tatum? That has to be right. I actually hadn't. I spelled it J A S O N. Tatum has to be here, actually. Mm. Yeah, that's a good thought. So we're gonna boot number five. I don't know where Tatum, but he's definitely in the top five. So the guy that gets booted is a uh, famous draft bus, Jason Thompson. Mm. Jason Thompson was gonna be in the top. He is, five. He's gonna be number five. <laughs> Dude, yo. That's we, all right, so I don't feel bad about ga- guessing Jason Collins then. That's the thing, like, names don't right? – there's not that many dudes of any one name who are, like, actually good. Uh-huh. So just one to go. Jason Williams? Not Jason Williams oh. from Sacramento. Oh, it was right, Jason Williams. Right okay. on the head, it's Jason Williams. Okay. Jason Let's Williams. go. Okay. Oh, gee. Because it's, cause, cause it's, cause it's two of them. It was Jason Williams that played for Philadelphia mm-hmm. and the Nets, but Jason Williams that played for Sacramento. Okay. I yeah. got you. All right. Team nerds. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Not to be confused with the Crisco kid, to be clear. <laughs> no. That is correct. Okay. Out of the top five all-time leaders in finals threes made, two of those guys have never been all-stars. Who are those two players? Mike Miller. Oh, no, not Miller. Mike Miller. Miller was definitely probably an all-star, right? Uh, J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith is correct. That's I absurd. Do... And Mike there's Miller, one more? There's one more. Mike Miller was not an all-star, Logan, but it's a solid guess. He just has – I mean, he has a, a few heat years. I mean, you're thinking about top five. I mean, Curry and Clay have to be, like, by far one and two. Yeah. That's correct. J.R. You said that's uh, not all – Mario said that Chalmers? Not all that's correct, OG. It's not Mario Chalmers, but he's not in the stars. top 15. Steve Kerr? Not Kerr. Chances are it's going to be in the last decade mm-hmm. or a decade and a half in a team that routinely made the finals. Process of elimination. This is what nerds do. <laughs> this is what nerds do. You got to slash the trash. Mm-hmm. Is it? Uh... Well, we know who we know is not Harrison Barnes. We know that for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> we know he's not in it. Okay. So that is out. that is true. Harrison Barnes, a.k.a. Mr. 2 for 11, is not here. Mm-hmm. Amon so Shumpert. Thinking, it's not Shump. Along the lines of J.R. Smith, though, role player, played as a catch-and-shoot guy for a team that frequently made the finals. It's not Trevor Ariza, is it? No. It's not, not Ariza. No. Man, I have some really bad guesses, like James Jones or Channing Fry, bro. Like, I mean, they were there probably every year, right? Channing Fry's not a terrible guess. Neither of them are here. You're a little bit too tied to the LeBron wagon there. Although, mm. this guy did play with LeBron, but that's not where you would think of I, him first. I already, I already Danny know Green. Danny Bingo. Green. Bingo. That's correct. He and JR both have exactly 59. Closest answer, just off, would have been Robert Ori, who had 56. But well done, boys. Man, Jason, well done, bro. 
All right, I got another fun game for you guys. Carson Carson's being up. very nice and staying in my my wheelhouse, <laughs> which is the relative <laughs> modern NBA. He could <laughs> he could destroy me with some Frank whatever the fuck. But he's, he's first of nice. all, <laughs> first of all, that would suck. <laughs> Nobody wants that. I don't expect anybody else to answer questions about Frank Ramsey. Although I, OG can get in his bag like that, but yeah. you're mowing through these, so well done. You're being nice, Carson. Thank you. No, stop it. All right, quit playing around. Jason, name me all of the leading scorers in the 1960s right now. Right now. <laughs> I would embarrass myself, dude. Trust me. All right, gentlemen. Carson broke this game out a couple uh, trivia times back. I'm going to sing you guys some uh, some bars with athletes in them, and you're going to tell me who sung those bars. Okay. Worry, I'm not the Mike Jordan of the mic recording. It's Baby, you Kobe, maybe Tracy McGrady. Matter of fact, you a Harold Miner, J.R. Ryder, washed up on marijuana. Even worse, you a Purvis Ellis, you worthless fella. You ain't no athlete, you Sean Bradley. That's just incredible. This, <laughs> th- this is Jay Z, right? This is Jay Z on uh, Pump It Up Freestyle. That's well what done. it sounded like. That's what it sounded like. Carson, <laughs> how? <laughs> That's what it sounded like. That's what that sounded like. That's not like Jigga Man. All right. Real sick, raw nights. I perform like Mike. Anyone, Tyson, Jordan, Jackson. Pick one. Th- this Game is Kanye, sick. right? This is not Kanye. Oh, I know this song, but who? It's Jigga. Jay-Z again. Yeah. Oh, it it's is again? Not, it's not Jay-Z. Is it not? S- say the ball again. Real sick, raw nights. I perform like Mike. Anyone, Tyson, Jordan, Jackson. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. That's the the notorious B.I.G. It's Biggie oh, from Victory. Yes, sir. There we okay, go. final one. Let's. I was you thinking guys of the go. Watch the Throne song. I think it has something similar. I think you're right. I want to get that LeBron first Nike contract money. Stack it to the ceiling. Call it Shaq money. The doc told me to be patient, but I want money like Dwight Howard next time he a free agent. Ball like Tony Parker do it. Speak no English, but De Niro. I talk it fluent. Okay, I think we can pinpoint an error here because if there's a Dwight bar, it's got to be early 2010s or it could be late 2000s. But I don't know. I do not recognize this off the top of my head. Mid 2000s. I'll give you that, Carson. I've actually played this song for you. Oh, I guess I wasn't paying attention. My fault. (laughs) You were whipping the buggy. (laughs) Okay, well, that makes me wonder if it's like one of your one of your just favorite rappers but i don't want to just blindly guess dudes it's not the game is it it is the game come on good boy, dude. <laughs> let's go there's a ton <laughs> the game the game has a so ton of sports insane. bars but that's money dude that is that is for what it's worth i was totally playing the player there that was only based off my knowledge <laughs> of logan and thinking from there okay we've got a very modern one for you guys here one of these players did not average 20 points per game this past season. Who is it? Terry Rozier, Jordan Clarkson, Jordan Poole, Fred Van Vliet, or Jeremy Grant? Fred Van Vliet. That's correct. Jason. You're the man, Jason. Let it rip. Were, I think you were like 19 and 7, something like that. I think I looked into this when the Rockets signed him, and I was like confused. Like, I, I didn't really understand the angle they were going with with Fred Van Vliet. And I like Fred Van Vliet, and I guess it's largely just let's get a grown up in the room. That's what it all. To, that's all to it basically, is. Nothing yeah. else but that. That's all it is. It's let's yeah, get a like grown let's up teach Jalen and Kevin how to play that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Because he's more of a because he's more he's more he's more of a poor man's Trey Young. What I mean when I say that is he takes a lot of bad shots, but he doesn't take yeah. like the volume that Trey Young takes him. But he takes a lot of bad shots, which well, and he's great with goal percentage. He's great with dirty work, which is the kind of thing that Jalen and Kevin need to get better at. Like Fred Van Vliet's yes. always been a fire hydrant defensive player who competes yes. and chases over screens and stuff. Um, yeah. But it makes sense because like I, my first instinct was like, why the hell would you pay him that but not pay James Harden? And right. then I kind of thought of it more from the long-term perspective and was like, okay, I kind of see what they're getting at here. If you're going to pay an established veteran guard who is coming from like a star sort of role, big money – Obviously, you want someone with the leadership traits, but also it's nice that he's played significantly off ball before and he can fill that role. So, like, if you do obviously need to get more primary ball handling reps for a man and for Kevin Porter Jr. and for Jalen Green, he fits into that more easily than somebody like Harden, who was like so constricting with his style. Exactly. 
And I also looked at him as a lesser version of Kyle Lowry. Like, I, I, I never felt like you could win the NBA championship with Kyle Lowry as your lead guard. But if you get somebody like Kawhi Leonard, the way Kawhi Leonard was, or LeBron mm-hmm. James, then you basically take so much of the pressure off Kyle Lowry. Because if you put the ball in his hands with DeMar DeRozan, well, you increase his mistake value. Definitely increased that when he's got Kawhi Leonard running with him, he doesn't have to do nearly as much. Well, I do the same thing with Fred Van Fleet. If you put somebody alongside him, like Jason Tatum or or uh, 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 an elite scorer or somebody that's elite on, on that side of the basketball, you decrease his, you decrease what he can do wrong. So I always felt like that about him, and I also felt like he was a a, a great rotation guard. I never really felt like he was a starter. On a, on, a, on, a, on a playoff team that was going deep into the playoffs. I mm. never really felt like that about him. He played really well in the finals in 2019. He couldn't freaking miss a jump <laughs> shot. Um, also, yeah. I'm like super, uh, to your point, OG, I'm super high on Jabari Smith. Like I I have been completely blown away by him this summer. And I, I think that he's actually more exciting than anything else going on in Houston. I was, I when I saw the Orlando Magic pick, um, when I saw the Orlando Magic pick Bonchero, and then I saw Oklahoma City take the big guy, I was like, Houston's getting this kid. They, he's a steal. They got to be flipping out that they're going to get him because he was supposed to be the number one overall pick. My buddy, really quickly, guys, my buddy said to me earlier in this college basketball season, he was like, this kid that plays at Auburn, uh, Jabari Smith or something like that. Yo, Jay, he reminds me of Lenny Bias. I ran to the TV. I'm like, <laughs> What? Is that I ran to the TV because I'm like I gotta see this kid who he is. I Houston definitely stole him 100. Mm-hmm. percent Well, he he was a project like he literally could not dribble coming out mm-hmm. last no, year. It, like, yeah. it, but to me that's what that that to me is what uh, impresses me the most because like anybody who plays basketball knows that making improvements as a ball handler or a shooter is a super incremental process. You have to do it hundreds and thousands of times to experience the slightest bit of improvement. So when I see when I see Jabari Smith this year looking like a competent ball handler, when the dude literally couldn't put the ball on the floor last year, that tells me that he's a gym rat and that he's super competitive and that he's obsessed with getting better. And that just like tells me over the next five years that the sky is the limit for him. I feel like his game as a as as a scorer particularly because the defense is there. The defense is going to translate, right? I watch him how switchable he is. I watch him his ability to rebound. His the defense is definitely there. It's just a matter of is he going to be able to be a guy to take quality shots? He's going to get quality looks. The ball handling is going to improve. Is he going to take quality shots? And are they going to play him the right way? Like I don't see them putting him at the four and putting him on the block. You're going to screw his game up if you do that. Don't do that. No. Keep him on the wing. If you keep him on the wing and make him more of a, a, a upgraded version of Sean Marion, I think that he can be really good. I think he can be too. That's that's high praise. But uh, Jabari special. I he also was in like a really bad situation too at Auburn. Man, guys, I got another straightforward one for you. Can you tell me the five Celtics players that have scored the most points in a single season? And this is uh, by total points, uh, not uh, per game. Jason Tatum. So we can start. With- Number three. Mm-hmm. Pavlicek. Number yep. one. Larry. Larry. Number two. Uh, let's see. Sam Jones. In a single season. All right. Jones is a good guess. He's not here. Let me see. Uh, well, Jones. Pierce, is up. Pierce, number five. Yeah. And then I'm trying to think about dudes who have averaged 25 plus. McHale did that. Is he here? McHale is not here. Uh, in the top 20, Jones is in the top 15. It can't be anybody in the 90s. Certainly not going to be Antoine Walker, I'll tell you that much. (laughs) I mean, 60 (laughs) foods. I don't think Tommy Heinsohn ever would have had a season. No, no, this dude dude was getting buckets, man. 28.9. Wow. That's very similar to what Hondo did in his best season. This probably somebody from the – it ain't Koozie. It's not Koozie. I can't believe you guys have forgotten this happened already. Okay, that makes it sound. Oh, oh my God, Isaiah Thomas, dude. It's Isaiah Thomas, dude. Wow. Correct. Correct. I was looking at that totally wrong. I was thinking about all the throwback grades. Yeah, me too. That's... Still serving buckets at the Pro-Ams, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> dude, he still wants somebody to give him a contract, mm-hmm. the poor guy. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But he led, that... led the league in four points that year, too. I remember mm-hmm. that. Yep. 
in the 2017 season, it's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, he was yeah. crazy efficient, too. It's really one of the underrated scoring seasons of all time. Clearly, it's underrated. It looked like Allen just... Iverson that year with all those, like, little mm -hmm. mid-range fadeaways he was hitting. It was incredible. Yeah, actually, not, only did he, not only did he lead the, the league in fourth-quarter points, he actually averaged the most fourth-quarter points since, I think, more than Kobe Bryant, more than Malone, something like that. Yeah, it was a special year, man. Yeah. All right. I'm going to take you guys back to 2003 when the New Jersey Nets made the NBA Finals after winning 49 games, which actually made them the number two seed out East. How many teams in the West that year, though, had a better record than the finalist Nets? I don't want to say all eight. <laughs> <laughs> Not out of the question for this era. So I it would have been Lakers, Spurs, Kings. Blazers, Mavs. I was going to say, Jason might have to carry on this one. I had not gained sentience yet. So sitting at five right now, out of what Jason's named. It's fun seeing Jason dial in in the trivia format. <laughs> <laughs> the Rockets, is that correct? No three? No, that was before TMA. That was like Stevie Franchise and Yao, I want to say. Mm. Yeah, it was rookie year. I will say... The first five that you named were correct. Spurs and Mavs won 60. Kings won 59. Lakers and Blazers both won 50. So the question is how many, correct? Mm -hmm. How many? How many? Oh, oh, three. I, oh, three. Hey, G wouldn't have dragged Minnesota to 50 wins, would he? He might have. You sure yeah. about that, Logan? I don't, I sure. don't know. You know he wouldn't have? <laughs> KG was something yeah. fierce. KG so won the yeah. KG won the MVP in 04, correct? The next yeah. year. The next year he won it. And to your point, Logan, he was dragging them to 50 yeah. win seasons before that. So Yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Minnesota and say it's six. That is think, exactly Logan? right. Oh my bad, I jumped oh. again. <laughs> but that is exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Those are the six you guys got them. T Wolves mm -hmm. won 51 games that year, and KG very nearly won MVP in 03 as well. It was another really tight race with him and Duncan. Well, yeah, good carry job. All right, Carson, you asked me this one on last trivia time, a football version of this question. Mm. Can you tell me what NBA player has the most career points without a 20-point-per-game season? That's that is such a good so question. fun. <laughs> okay, my first thought, which I don't think is quite right, is Jamal Crawford, but I think he averaged 20 once in his career. I think just barely. But he's not, top 50 all-time in scoring, so. Not Jay Crossover, and I'll give you a hint. This guy's actually higher up than that. Oh, my God. It's John Stockton, isn't it? I don't know. It's not Stockton. Hmm. That's that's a good – that's a very good guess. Stockton is very Let close. me guess. Stockton went over 20, didn't he? No, he no. never did. No, he did it? No. Yeah, there's just a guy who outscored him. That's a good guess. Stockton's... Best season was uh, 17 a game. That was his best season. Okay, so there's somebody higher. Which yes. means I think we're looking at, like, top 40 scores of all time kind of range. It never got to 20. So that's crazy longevity. So then Can I, I get think... the question one more time, Logan? One, one, one more time, Logan. Yeah. Most career points without a 20-point per game season. Most career points without a 20-point per game I season. I mean, I'm thinking about Chief here. Who is what, like 26th in scoring? He's way up there, but he would have been around 20 so many years. I think he probably got there once, but I don't feel bad about that. What do you think, OG? Robert Parrish, do you think he got 20? No, because Robert Parrish did average 20 at one point. Yeah, you think so? Okay. I think I know it, but I don't want to guess until you guys quit. So. Okay, Jason, do I'm going to text <laughs> okay. Logan. I'm texting Logan. Here we go. That's that's an honorable way to play it. So if I remember correctly, let's see. So Kendall Gill is the all-time leading scorer who never made the all-star team. So that would leave a guy in the top 50 in terms of scoring, a guy that never averaged 20 a game. Yeah. By the way, I love a Kendall Gill mention. He's yeah. a he's a favorite of mine. When he when he retired, by the way, that's not that's not going on right now. Yeah, he never averaged twenty. I'm stumped on this one. I am. We'll get there. So uh, 
I'm just trying to think about dudes who stand out among the top 50 all time scorers. Like Tom Chambers is a weird one. He definitely scored 20 a game. I want to, I want to tip you guys off. You guys have already named the gentleman. Uh, is it Parrish? It it's Robert Parrish, oh, dude. It is Parrish. I didn't think it was Parrish. 19, <laughs> 19. 19.9, literally point so one. Almost wow. Parrish 20 again. How about that? It was Parrish. How about Logan? That? Logan, how close was Chauncey on that list? I'm checking on that. Um, Chauncey, I don't believe ever averaged. He did not. He uh, definitely did not average. Season. But he had a really long career where he was consistently in the high teens. That's why I was wondering yes. if he was on there. It's a good thought. 16, it's a 17. very good thought. The really only thing working against him there is that he's a slow starter. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. His first few years, he's he's single digits, low double digits. But that's a mm-hmm. that's really incredible so there's got to be a gap between parish and whoever's second on that list i think stockton's actually second Stockton. at 20 spots behind him yeah so, so we cooked, yeah. We cooked. <laughs> you cooked you did you cooked okay gentlemen i already asked you a question about the best players to never win mvp but here's a different one who are the top five players by career points per game to never win mvp Ooh, i like that question hondo Ooh, that's an interesting thought it's not hondo played so long uh ice man ice man or no did ice man get an mvp no he didn't no. ice man what? is here he is number three damn this is a weird guess i mean he only played 11 seasons pistol pete Ooh, not pistol pete but that's actually quite a good guess logan he is eighth on this list i'm blanking on his name logan which is this is what i was hinting at at the beginning <laughs> of the show but the, the the two guard for the hawks dominique wilkins Nick yes. is number five Neek actually played the three, but okay, sure. Man. <laughs> Dude, Neek's five. Is it Neek mm-hmm. at like 27 for his career or something like no. that? Neek oh. is at 24, 24.8. Look, who you think was chasing Jordan all them years when Jordan was having 37? <laughs> Neek right behind him every yeah. year. It's true. And what a- the one the one year Jordan was hurt, Neek got the scoring title. What about Alex English or Adrian Dantley? Are either of them here? Phenomenal guesses. Dantley is seventh on this list. Mm. Mm-hmm. English is a bit further down because he was a slower starter too, and he played a long time, but still a good guess. He was almost 22 per game in his career. What about Tracy McGrady? Ooh. Ooh. T-Mac, I think is 19.6 in his career. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm surprised. Too many, you guys didn't that's get... that stupid couple of years at the end. Yeah. yeah it was like the, the, the Knicks, Hawks, and Spurs years. Yeah. yeah. Because you can't have a super long career for this. Because if you do, then your numbers are going to gradually, you know, take a little actually, bit. Actually, you can. Time. You actually can, Logan. And I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't. Mention, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't mention this guy yet. It's really interesting that you haven't mentioned him. Wait, where, where's the cutoff for young players? I'm not sure what the exact minimum is, but everybody here has like a decade plus career. Okay, gotcha. Because mm-hmm. I was going to say, I'm sure Jason Tatum has a ridiculous high points per game, having never won MVP. Tatum is 22.5. He does qualify for this list, but he's not quite here. Is Luca here? Luca does not qualify for this list. I'll give you a hint. Two of these guys are top seven all time in points per game. Uh, Jerry West. Jerry there we West. go. I was yeah, trying to figure go. out what you were waiting for. I'm like the logo. I, I didn't even get the logo. Yeah, it was like 25, 26 a game for his career. Yeah, that was, that was a good hint. I was trying to think about who would have who would have ticked that like, box. What? The longevity. I, I forget that guy. These are two weird ones. What about what about like Mitch Richmond or or Gilbert Arenas? God, I can't believe you just threw no look, chill dude, deal look, out bro, there. You played like <laughs> ten. Seasons, what about uh, what about Carmelo Anthony? Ooh, not Melo. For what it's worth, no chill Gill and Mitch Richmond are both up by twenty one a game, so it's not way off. Melo twenty two point five. You guys are still missing the number one. West is number two with twenty seven points per game. Elgin Baylor. Elgin Baylor is number okay, one. Let's there go. we go. 27.4. Okay. So we need one more. <laughs> one more. Baylor, Ooh. Gervin West, Wilkins. This guy, significantly more modern. Think in the last, Logan, think like in the last, what are we in, 2023? Think in the last like 15 years. 15. Um, I'll go even further. This guy is active. What? It's not it's not like Joe Johnson or something, is it? <laughs> well, dude, I mean, it's not I said Joe. Joe played I mean, last year. I mean uh no, he played well two it was two years oh, ago. My now. fault, my fault. But I saw Joe, I mean, yeah, he's top fifty all time in scoring, but 
this guy is in a different class than the great ISO Joe. Come on, Logan. We can do this. Kyrie. Ooh, it's not Kyrie. That's a great guess, though. 23.4 puts Kyrie. At what's the number. what's the what's the minimum like? I you said some guys don't qualify for this list. What's like the minimum requirement? Well, he this said guy... it was everybody had at least 10 years of experience. That oh, was on the okay. List. So that's okay. our giveaway. So uh active player, but definitely in the later uh portion of his career and super high points per game. Let's think here. It's not Anthony Davis, is it? No, it can't be. It's too low. AD's a good guess, though, man. He's at 24. He's two spots above Kyrie at number nine. This guy, well, oh, I'm George? not going to give that. That was going to be too big of a yeah, hit. Yeah, don't give it away. Don't give it away. We're going to get it. You guys are going to get it. PG is uh, a little bit lower down at 20.6. It's not Kawhi. No, it's too too low from the beginning, I'm guessing. That's too right. Low. Kawhi is at 19.6. It's not Carl Towns, is it? You know, Cat's actually close. He is at twenty three. Okay. Um. Okay. So it's got to be. We're we're missing like the real high volume guys, Logan. John Wall. No, it's not Russell Westbrook, is it? No, Russ has the MVP in twenty seven. Oh yeah, that's right. He won MVP. That's stupid. That was a bad guess. Um. Hey, Jason. It happens to all of us. <laughs> there was it's one so time. Run, is it? There was one time where I sat there <laughs> for five minutes and couldn't remember Jerry Sloan's name. And it was <laughs> as, yeah, it happens Man. to everyone. Come on, Logan, we can do this. Okay, high volume score, last 15 years, still active. Can't have wasted years as a role player. Mm -hmm. Consistently has been putting up big numbers from Blake? day one. It's not Blake, is it? Not Blake. Damn. He's not active. You got well, to think. technically active. To be tw so, this guy is 25 plus points per game, which means, as Jason's saying, you got to come out the gate hot and you got to be consistently extremely productive. Donovan, no, I mean, Donovan Mitchell hasn't played long enough, but actually, he? it's very good thinking. Donnie would be literally the first guy off this list 24.6 points per game. Wow, hey, so he came in at sixth, yeah. Okay, come on, we can do this. It's you guys are going to be really pissed at yourselves. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm fully expecting to have a meltdown. Um, <laughs> oh, flip out. Because, like, tw how, many guy how many guys in NBA history, like, in, in this era, even have a career point per game average over 25? It's insane that we can't think of this. Um, okay, Logan, let's try something different. Let's think back about five years and think about all NBA guys. Okay. Because chances are, in that age, he would have been consistently a top. 15 like, player in the Oogie? NBA. Uh, it's it's not Bradley Beal, is it? Ooh, not Beal. I love that. No. Um, Devin Booker. Oh, it's not Book. 23.9. Uh, Beal, 22.1. But it's man. interesting that you say Beal. These two came into the league uh, together. What is it, 2012? Mm-hmm. That's the Michael Kidd Gilchrist AD... Come on, right there, fella. Logan. This is you. this is not our brightest moment, Logan. Yeah, I'm telling you, you're gonna flip out when you when you realize who it is. You know yeah, I'm not out. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, man. Hey, we can do on. this. We can do this. We can do this. Come on. You guys are having to overcome the brain fog that happens when you're doing trivia. It's inevitable. You get stuck. <laughs> the lights are hot. Trust us. <laughs> we've, I mean, we've been there a million times. But you I mean, know this. Was this guy a lottery pick? Yes, and he was rookie yes. of the year. Oh, and it wasn't Irv. <laughs> Who is this guy, man? OG wants you to get there. <laughs> we can do it. Come on, Logan. Come on, Logan. I may have to, I may have to call time on you guys. Oh. Who I'll give it? you one one last crack if you can think of it in the next. I mean, he won rookie seconds. of the year, dude. Yeah. Okay, we each get one more guess. Come on. Come on, Logan. But it's oh. got it's gotta be quick. Okay. Dion Waiters. <laughs> no. no. I mean, dude, that's so funny because you've named four of the top six guys in the draft, but not not this one. I, I'm I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I'm what you got? Jason Jason, he had three sixty point games in a season. Oh, Damian, Damian Lillard. Lillard. Damian Lillard. Yeah. Oh, that is so annoying. That's so annoying. God damn it. 
It happens. Oh. I'm gonna have to turn in my trivia card, bro. <laughs> I was surprised when Lo I was surprised Logan when he started naming mm. guys off. I'm thinking the logo. That's what you should have started with. <laughs> like that's what you should have started with right there. Damian God, Lillard. Then, when the, then, then I'm like Damian Lillard. I mean, we talking about a dude who. 30 and 8, 28 and 8, 28 and 7. It's because he's in Portland, man. It's because yeah, he's in, in Portland, Yeah, in our defense, he's descended into irrelevance over the last couple of years. <laughs> I forgot he existed. That, that, oh. will do it. that will do it. So, and Jason, I will tell you, I, I, saw your, uh, I saw your take on Paul Pierce. I've had some pretty – I don't like to talk about myself, but I, I've, I've, I've gotten it right a couple of times. I've gotten it wrong a lot of times. But I've gotten it right a couple of times, and I can't remember being more right than what you were with Paul Pierce because you were spot on with him. You know what was spot funny about that him. take? I, well, I appreciate that. You know what? I, you know what? I, I, when I made the take, I wasn't talking about their archetypes as players because obviously they play very differently. I just meant right. like kind of like their overwhelming confidence, the way that their peers respected them, the way that they mm -hmm. were like able to reach that absolute apex level in any single game. Like you couldn't count on them to do it seven times in a row in the playoffs, but like on any single game, they could reach that apex level. Uh, that that was kind of the way I looked at it. But the way the the way you could, the way that I thought was the best compliment you could get from that take is everybody was equally thought I was stupid on either end. Like everyone's like, <laughs> screw that, right. Jimmy's better, or screw that, Paul's yeah. better. And it was mm -hmm. like equal both True. ways. <laughs> but I do think, I mean, stylistically, they are very different, but they also do have some things in common that translate well to the playoff stage. Like they're big, physical, strong wings. They get to their mm -hmm. spots. They're versatile shot makers. They're good playmakers for their position. So it's like, you know, yeah. if you can consistently get to your bread and butter, and if you can have a multifaceted impact, play, make it a high level, defend at a high level, whatever. Those are the things that translate. And mm -hmm. know, Jimmy and Pierce, and I think, Jimmy, both and have Jimmy that. Butler, to, to your point, Jason, Jimmy Butler and Paul Pierce, really, I and mean, I don't know why, but they really step on the floor. And the, and the logic is, I am the best player out here. Not yeah, they one of you dudes is out here better. Yeah, no they, they they both stepped on the same floor with LeBron James and was like, I'm better than that dude. <laughs> I'm, better than that dude. I'm thinking, where is this coming from? Where, 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 what are you doing? Where is this coming? Paul Pierce stepping on the floor with LeBron, like, I'm better than him. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes, Paul Pierce, I am better than him. And he continuously wants to let us know how much better he is than everybody, particularly yeah. Dwayne Wade. Actually, actually like, guys, guys, I want you to stick with this for a second. Uh, can you guys name the top five players LeBron has defeated the most in the playoffs? But that's most, a question. Yeah, yeah, while we're, while we're on this. Since, since, All right. On that subject, the, the top so, five guys he's beat the most in the playoffs. Let's was see. this one of your questions, Logan? Yes, I'm so glad you guys got here. This is uh, by Clutch. most games lost and uh, not series. Most games lost. Okay. So, first of all, who has he beaten multiple times? Obviously, we have the Pacers in back-to-back -back conference finals. Correct. Be Washington in back-to-back -back years. Be Gilbert they actually beat the twice. Pacers three times. Yeah. Uh, with the Heat, three times with the Heat, and then uh, once with Cleveland. And Cleveland, well. and Cleveland. Jason, stop yeah. running counterintelligence. We need to make my a bad, my bad. <laughs> I, I, I was getting to that anyway. Uh, but let's think. <laughs> is there anybody who was on the Oladipo team who was also on the earlier? Because if there is, then that guy's got to be here. And I will say there's three guys tied for fifth place, so you guys just need to give me one of those. You don't need to give me everybody. Okay. Paul George was on that. Paul George was on that 18 team. He got hurt, though. That was the year. No, he got traded already. He was already in Oklahoma City. I take that He was in OKC. Sure. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just trying to think about. I don't see. think anybody crosses over from both. I think there might be one guy. Really? A role player, yeah. I mean, dude, I just keep thinking about CJ Miles, but. <laughs> He wasn't in Dude, Indiana for that. Shout out, long. shout out, CJ Miles for shooting that game winner instead of Paul George that one game. Man, I I always think back to that game. One role player. It's not Lance, is it? <laughs> it's Lance. Stevenson. Wow. Lance, Lance Stevenson. Stevenson, dude. Career nine and seventeen versus LeBron in the playoffs. He's fourth. Okay, so it's seventeen losses to get on. That's a good number to Six, have. Sixteen minimum. Okay. Yeah. I'm going back to, so figure this out. Figure this out, Carson. So, yeah. In, in, in James first made the playoffs. The first year he made the playoffs was the 05 06 season. They beat right. Washington. 06 07, they beat Washington and they beat the, the Nets. They beat Detroit. Next mm -hmm. year after that, in 07 08, they lose in the second round. They lose to Boston. But the first round, who did they beat in the first round that year? I think they beat Washington again. No, they didn't. 
They did not beat Washington. You guys have four different franchises represented still on this list. Okay. I'm thinking, is Rajon Rondo here? Not Rondo. Let's see where Rondo's at. Rondo has 13 losses. Okay, so he's close. Because that's the thing. It's not series one. It's games one. Right. right. So if you played series, a team multiple games. times, if you lose to them. DeMar DeRozan? DeRozan's a good guess. I mean, he walked to the dog on those Toronto teams. They did play a lot, but yeah, he definitely. DeRozan not here, unfortunately. I mean, to some extent, it feels like role players who could bounce around to multiple situations sort of make more sense here. Eh, I mean, all these guys are really good. Okay. I mean, in L.A., there hasn't been anybody who he's beat up on consistently enough. These are all Eastern Conference uh, contenders, yeah. They beat, they beat Boston. He beat Boston. He beat Boston, let's see, twice. He beat Boston twice. Seven, 17 he, and 18. Right. He beat them in, he beat them in 12, and 11 and 12. So he beat Boston 12, four yeah. times. Beat them four times. Who was right. on they that beat court? Boston in 15, too, in the first round. They did beat Boston in 15, too. I mean, okay, Dude, Marcus I, that, Smart? Not Marcus Smart. That's Jake a Crowder. good guess. <laughs> Al Horford. Al Horford is one of the Al best. Horford is number yeah. one, dude. Guys, he's four That's and nineteen a, lifetime Al versus Horford. LeBron good in the Atlanta and Boston. Yep. Al Horford yep. is definitely on that list. Tortured soul, man. Dude, do you mm-hmm. do you guys remember in the Hawks series when LeBron got Al Horford? No, it might have been Paul Millsap, but he was doing it to Horford too, but he kept getting Horford and Paul Millsap on switches, and after he'd get them on switches, he'd turn his back to the basket and dribble back to half court and like walk back <laughs> to half court. And then he would and turn bro, around and then just barbecue him. him. <laughs> That's vicious. Like LeBron. LeBron was so dominant in the Eastern Conference in the mid 2000s that he was legitimately messing around during playoff <laughs> games. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Which, by the way, I had a theory and I got roasted for it. Everybody talks about the Western Conference being tougher because the better players would go over there. You just mentioned, Jason, about how good James was. Could it possibly be that those guys saw what he was doing? And they decided we don't want anything to do with that. I'd rather go up against Russell Westbrook and Tony Parker and Darren Williams than have to deal with him. I think I think it's complicated because like I do think that there's some truth to the fact that any star knew that if they wanted to sign as a free agent for an Eastern Conference team, they were gonna have to go toe-to-toe with LeBron in a, in a conference finals and maybe maybe thought they were better off in the West. But more importantly, oh, like <laughs> I always just think any I always just think any conversation surrounding the Eastern Conference for LeBron gets stupid when you realize he has four championships, which which means like he mm-hmm. also came out of the East three times and beat the team that got out of the West. So it's like it to me to me that doesn't that that part is silly. And then honestly, like it wasn't like they were running into it wasn't like he was running into standard Western Conference teams and losing. He was running into like the KD Warriors, right? You know, like it was. Yeah, it, it, like, yeah. I, it's yeah. It wasn't like it wasn't like he ran into you know a, a, a like the 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 Chris Paul Blake Griffin Clippers and got his ass kicked. You right. know what I mean? Right, right. So Al Hoffman, I, I, I when 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 you said when I thought about Boston, I'm thinking, wait a minute. Al Hoffman was on both yeah. of those Boston teams, and he was on those Atlanta teams too. Al great Hoffman. thought, great thought. You you guys have uh, three more players on this list that are from two of the franchises that you guys have already named. Do we have Logan, did you see the text here? that I sent you? Is it that guy? I'm curious. <laughs> it's it's not. That's a good guess, actually. So we got Al Hoffman. We got Lance Stevens. Yeah. We got Can Lance we... Stevens. Stan, Lance Stevenson. And we're missing somebody. We do not have Avery Bradley, Logan. I'm telling you, these guys are all better than than these role players that you guys are. Nobody's naming. better than Avery Bradley. We <laughs> don't have. Him, I love Avery Bradley too. By the way, I want to make sure we play. The, pist- the Pistons bought in. I mean, you guys are forgetting too. I mean, about the early years of LeBron. You know what I mean? Yeah, guys. There's yeah. They, there were some other Celtics series in there. Right. If it's not Rondo, then I don't know who you would have beaten more from those Boston teams. Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce tied for second. Yeah. I guess I should have used context clues. That being what led into this uh-huh. entire question, Logan using it as a segue. Uh, there's okay. another guy, the exact same record as Paul Pierce. Ray Allen. Nope. KG. Kevin Garnett tied for second, you guys, man. You guys got to remember the net series. They, so like they, they, oh, yeah. there was the, th- the three losses in 07. There was the two losses in 2000 or three losses in 08, two losses in 2010, four in 2011, four in 2012, four more in 2014. Cause that Nets team lost five games, uh, four games to one. 
Just, just, are you talking about the, the, the 14 Nets that Danny Ainge should be in prison because he should be charged with a felony for what he did? <laughs> Those are the ones. What, one of my oh, underrated my best LeBron games, game four of that series, is two games to one. And then Paul Pierce had some sort of like comment after game three about guarding LeBron, and LeBron just barbecued his ass in game five. Destroyed game him. Four. Destroyed him. Yeah. Soaked him. It was in five games. I remember that. Yeah. I was surprised they actually got a game in that series. I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, that was a decent about. Nets team, though. Like they were, they were decent. They weren't, Jason. KG was over. <laughs> no, they were not. Jason, KG I, they, was I over. I thought they were a decent <laughs> playoff team. They were a decent yeah. playoff team that the Heat made look bad. <sighs> See, this is one of my biggest pet, pet peeves with the LeBron thing. It's like it's like the 2020 bubble run. Everyone's like, oh, my right. God, that Blazers team, best eight seed ever. And then it's like, oh, shit, it's uh, it's the, the Rockets the going five out. They're going to space out the Anthony Davis. Uh-huh. And they're going to Zach Lowe like, is like, oh, I think the Rockets are going to beat him. And then it's like, this is the Nuggets team, which, by the way, like, right. Nicole Jokic was there in 2020. He made first-team All-NBA in 2019. Right. He was, you know, he was consistently in the MVP race. They mm-hmm. beat up the Clippers team that everybody thought actually was the favorite. Then the Lakers kicked right. their ass, too. And, and then at the end of the playoff runs, like, oh, bubble, they just ran through all these bad teams. I'm right. like, what the hell are you guys talking about? <laughs> yeah. like, right. and, 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 and... When you put it like that, it does make sense. But when I'm thinking about who Kevin Garnett was at that point, he was on the, he was Chris Webber in Philadelphia. Like, remember that? Remember the 20 and 10 mm-hmm. guy? But mm-hmm. then the next year, he just completely looked like he was running with, you know, glue in his shoes. That's what yeah. he looked like. Like his feet was nailed to the floor. That's who KG was. That's who KG was in, in Brooklyn the year before that. He was awesome that year, but he wasn't nearly what KG was years before that. Same thing with Paul Pierce. Like I think that crew broke up the year after that. Like Paul Pierce went to yeah, Washington. They did. KG mm-hmm. went to went to Mil- went to Min- went back to Minnesota. So I don't want to I don't want to discount how how good you know I don't want to discount how good Miami was. But that that Brooklyn team, I mean, Danny Ainge definitely got the better end of that. Well, those guys was, were way past what they used to be. For sure. But it was an interesting team because it was also Darren Williams and Joe Johnson and with, Brooke with Lopez. those two guys. It, Brooke right. Lopez was on that team. Who was, wasn't Andre Blotch on that team, yeah. too? Yeah, sure. he was. Andre Blotch uh, was on that team. Yeah, they mm-hmm. were. Uh, yeah, they were like they were one of those teams where like they kind of BS through the regular season because they were old as shit. But then when they got to that series, like they played physical defense and they had a yeah. bunch of guys who could put the ball in the floor and make shots. Like they were a somewhat formidable playoff team, like not a championship quality team, but a, right. a somewhat formidable team that the that the Heat dealt with. And they ended up winning the first round series against Toronto. I do remember that mm-hmm. where they were they mm-hmm. weren't that bad, and then they run up on Miami. So this is this is the rematch because now you mm-hmm. got Darren Williams, who's better than what they had in the past. Now you got yeah. Brooke Lopez, who's a better rim protector. When in reality, no, no. And, and like it, the it's it, what's funny too is like that's one of my big what ifs for that Heat team because man, like. LeBron was peaking right around that time in 2014. Yeah. And then Spolster had gone all in on Bosch at the five and spacing the floor. And like, all I can think about is like, what if knee- Wade's knees had held up and like, they had leaned more into that style, that spread drive and kick style, but like with a legit D Wade instead of by, by 2014, Wade was legitimately like a shell of himself. Like, it, it, so it's, it's, yeah. So it, it, it would have been interesting to see what that team could have looked like had things gone a little differently in that era. Cause especially now that we look back and Spolster is like maybe the best coach alive, you know, you can make a legit argument that he's the best coach of his era. You can make a legit yeah. argument. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do think, I do think that, that there's really, some logic there that he could be the best coach of his ever, mm-hmm. considering the talent level that he had. When you look at Jimmy Butler, take Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, and these guys have been together for a long time, right? So with mm-hmm. these guys being together for a long time, it's not like he's piecing these teams together. He basically developed these units, and Jimmy Butler was the catalyst, mm-hmm. and Bam Adebayo being an all-league defender, potentially becoming an all-NBA performer. Mm-hmm. These guys and their roles being as good as they are and what Spo actually did to develop those guys. And his coaching schemes more than anything, because I look at that offense that they run, it's really similar to what Golden State does, right? So kind of what Draymond Green with the, as the primary ball handler, except with Bam, they run it through him, where there's a lot of give and goes, a lot of a lot of pick and pop with Bam dribble on handoffs. the perimeter. Yeah. Uh, dribble handoffs with Bam on the perimeter, as opposed to a lot of a, a, one guy dominating the basketball. So I think that has a lot to do with Spo. You can make a legit argument that he might be the best coach of his era. And on top of that, with the exception of Greg Popovich, he's the only coach who's still been with his team for longer mm-hmm. than a decade. Nobody else has. Everybody else is gone. 
it's crazy how like he was the film room guy that Pat <laughs> Riley might replace, and now he's like hmm. legitimately a staple in this league. Like the dude, it, like like you're just you just expect like Spolster will be coaching the Heat 15 years from now. Like it's crazy to even think they're gonna build the statue of him, Jason, outside the arena one day. Yeah, they, they are. will. <laughs> they will. It, it's right. gonna be LeBron bumping him with his shoulder. That's gonna be the statue. <laughs> Jason managed to get us to talk about LeBron for 15 minutes there. Meanwhile, sorry, I was guys. no, no, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> We're buying me time because I think I might have the last one. I mean, we haven't talked about the Bulls, who I think LeBron beat thrice. It, is D Rose here? Victor, Not Derrick Rose. Wait, is it Jimmy Butler? Is it Jimmy Butler? Not Jimmy Butler. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, Joe King Noah. Think. Joe Kim Noah is here. He is tied for fifth with Taj Gibson and Paul George. Say, Taj. Let's go. So those are all the squads. I want to add too on that on that Spo point too. You guys remember that season where he drug like I don't know, man. It was like Goran Dragic and Josh Richardson to like forty four yeah. wins or something, uh-huh. man. I mean that team was. If a- Chris Bo- if Chris Bosh doesn't get blood clots, I think they're back in the Eastern Conference Finals. Mm-hmm. Potentially, bro. They were good that yeah. season. I think they're back. Well, in the Eastern yeah, because remember that year? That was the Wade purple shirt year. The, yes. when he did when he beat up the Hornets like dude yeah yes. like, that would have been an interesting team yeah I feel bad for Bosch can you imagine that being cut down in your prime by a condition like that that would suck what was he like what was he, he was in like 2016 I think he was in his team he still had some he still had some good years left he was still super super productive when he was healthy and they're hearing he keeps getting logic of you know we're going to get a second opinion we're going to get a second opinion Pat Riley is like listen you are not going to die on national television mm-hmm. on our watch. Yeah. It's not oh happening. yeah. No. Uh-huh. And he That's he would have been happening. he would have been thirty because it happened the 2015 season and uh, LeBron turned thirty that year with Cleveland in 2015. I think Bosch was one year older though because he played in college, so I'd have yeah. put him at 31. So he was 31 when he got his career yeah. cut short. That sucks. Yeah. Anyway, he could have played. He could have played a bunch more years. Yeah. He, he still made a couple. I think he was still an All Star in 15 and 16 though because he, he was an All Star like- that year. 50 Hmm. games, and, you know, he was really, really good when he played. All right, guys, I've got a true or false question for Mm. you, and we're going Lakers here, Jason, to really get you in your bag. True or false, there is a player other than Kobe who did do this, who is top five for the Lakers in total points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks since 2000, just in that time span, top five in all those categories. And if this is true, that's correct, who is that player? And I'm only going to give you guys one guess here. Repeat the beginning one more time. Okay. There is one player other than Kobe, top five for the Lakers since 2000, in total points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. All five major statistical categories. I mean, the only guy I can think of that this would be true for, if it is true, is like Derek Fisher. Like, I don't know, man. You have to be with the team for so long to – to hit all, all those totals. Yeah. The uh, Pau Gasol was the other name I was thinking. Mm. Um, because he pretty consistently had decent point totals, rebounds. It says he stayed with the Lakers through 2014, I believe. 13? 14? Because then he went to the Bulls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't think LeBron would already be there in all those categories. I don't think AD would. I don't know, LeBron. man. He's, he's LeBron is a like, freak, dude. LeBron's played there five years now. But... He's pretty consistently down around like one block or steal a game. You would. What do you think, Logan? What's your take right now? I mean, I'm leaning, I'm leaning true, and I'm leaning Derek Fisher just because I mean, Fish has what 13 years with the Lakers in. How is he going to be top five in blocks over that span? Oh, that's a, that's a good point. I I would think it'd be Gasol, LeBron, or Anthony Davis, or nobody. You want to go? I don't know. I, I say my vote's probably either LeBron or nobody. What are you feeling, Jason? When does that Pow trade go down? Like 07? Pow Pow is only there 07, 08, uh, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I believe. Seven seasons. So you think it's smarter to go Pow or LeBron? I say we go Pow. Um, I- I'm with that. I'm, we're going to go with True and Pow Gasol. That is so close. Pow misses because of steals. It is true, though, and you guys did not even mention the player who it's true for. Okay, give us a second. Give us a second. Okay, okay. Okay. (laughs) Who do you think? OG, do you think you know? Don't don't say it, but yeah. I'm not going to say anything. Other than Kobe. 
I mean, I don't think it'd be Shaq. Pow is a really good guess, though. Nobody else has four out of the five besides Pow and the dude who's correct. Swaggy P, man. I mean, who's hanging around the Lakers? <laughs> and, and it's since 2000, you said? Since 2000. And this dude was a complete player. It makes sense. Ariza, Bynum. I thought Bynum, but I, I wouldn't think he'd be on the assist list. Uh, Shaq wasn't there long enough, I don't think, from 2000 to 2004. Although, man, he probably put up a shit ton of points, rebounds, yeah. steals, assists, and blocks over that span. Think Ben Simmons, except mm. more heady. Oh, Lamar Odom. Lamar there Odom. No way. There we go. Lamar now we're talking. Odom. I'm actually surprised he would have been there for points, but I guess I guess so. Yeah, he just probably put up a lot of points. Yeah, he is fifth for points. Gotcha. Man, one of the, one of Carson's guys, dude. One of my guys, crazy. My my. my Plus, you got to remember too, Logan. Up. You got to remember too, Logan. He was there. He played. I think he played eight seasons. Yeah, there. yeah. He played. He was there before the Gasol trade. Yeah, that's exactly. A, that's, a, that's a good comp. Ben Simmons, but more heady, dude. Yeah. Odom was Odom was well rounded. That's that's a good question, Carson. Dude, Lamar um, Odom was one of those guys too that, like, in any big game, you were just scared of, like that he was that he could make a big play in any situation because he was just well, a was, basketball player. He could do so many yeah. little things well. Then he was also one of those guys, Jason, who always left you wanting more. Oh yeah. Oh always. yeah. Yeah. Couldn't put always, down the candy, man. <laughs> always left you wanting more. It was always like you'd, you'd get a 23, 12, and eight game, and you'd be like, "How come you can't do this on the regular?" Yeah. <laughs> I also think he was probably ahead of his time. If he played with modern mm -hmm. spacing, modern skill development, I think he would have been like a primary ball handler earlier. I think he would have been, I mean, he was already obviously way ahead of his time in terms of ball handling, playmaking at his size. Oh, he'd be awesome in today's game. 100%. He'd be but awesome I think, in today's game. I mean, he was already a solid shooter. I think he would be a legitimate plus shooter. I think he would mm -hmm. be fantastic. That sort of like positional versatility. I mean, he's just yeah. like everything that you want if you drop him, you know, 10 years later. But I love Lamar Odom. He was literally my second favorite player growing up. So shout out to him. All right, guys, from Kobe's teammates to Jordan's teammates, can you guys name me every all-star teammate that MJ played with? Now, they don't have to have been an all-star the same year as Jordan, just mm. have to have been an all-star at any point in their career. Okay. Uh -huh. That's easy. So, Scotty. George Gervin. George Gervin. Scotty Gervin, both here. Uh, Artis Gilmore. Correct. Uh, let's see. Charles I'm trying Oakley. to think. You said Oak? Charles Oakley. Oakley here for Chicago and Washington, actually. Yes, sir. Charles Oakley. Good one. Uh, BJ Armstrong started in the All Star game in 94. 94 yeah, BJ. That's exactly right. Uh, let's see uh, who was. I'm trying to think. Dennis Rodman. Did, correct. Did Ku Coach ever make an All Star team? Ku no. Coach did not. That's a good guess. Did, I mean, not. I'm thinking of a couple of the not so good dudes who put up big numbers. Did Orlando yeah. Woolridge ever make an All Star team? Not Orlando Woolridge. I love that no. guess. Was Ron Tony Harper ever an All Star? Uh, Pre Jordan, Ron Harper Actually, was not. Bill Cartwright was never an All Star. Oh, sorry. Hmm? Robert Paris was on that ninety seventeen. Oh, good call. Paris. Chief is correct, Carson. I might backtrack a little bit. Bill Cartwright was an All Star. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. So you guys just have one more bull to go, Knicks teams, and then you have three Wizards. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We haven't tapped into the Wizards at all. Oh, uh, Rip Hamilton. Boom. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Stackhouse. Boom. Two guys to go. One in Chicago, one in Washington, both just one-time All-Stars. I mean, he didn't overlap with Jawan Howard in Washington, did he? Not Jawan, but maybe a guy Jawan knows really, really well. A guy Jawan knows really, really well? His yeah. wife? Yeah. Him... <laughs> <laughs> Jawan and this guy go way back. Maybe a foe of Jawan's. From, like, Michigan? Mm-hmm. Like, is it a Duke guy? I hate this guy, man. Is Christian Leitner? Oh, Christian Leitner, dude. Yeah, Christian Leitner, yeah. Christian Leitner. Made wow. the All-Star team in, two, I think, in 2004 or something. I think something like that. No, not the, uh, uh, the, uh, I think it was 90. Uh, I yeah, want to say it was 97 asked. with the Atlanta yeah. Hawks. The Hawks. Yeah, the That's game was in Cleveland, Cleveland. yeah. I remember that. Wait, Leitner was on the Wizards team? Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. wow. I did not remember that. Okay, That's you not... guys have got a state. Did Larry Hughes never make an All-Star team? I thought he did once. Larry Hughes didn't. He, was, he did overlap with Jordan, though. Okay. So we've got one more from when MJ was with the Bulls. Staple of the early Bulls. Oh, Horace Grant. Horace Grant. Boom. Well done, guys. There we go. Horace Grant. There it is. All right. 
Going to ask you guys another question about good Western Conference teams of the 21st century. Since 2000, seven franchises have made it to the Western Conference Finals once and never been back. Can you name them and the season they advanced that far? Okay, seven seven times since 2000, a team made the Western Conference Finals once and never went back. Never came back. Never came back. O2, O2, uh, O2 Kings. O2 Perfect. Kings. Uh, 2013 Grizzlies. Yep. Uh, we're gonna have the Trailblazers. What the is that the bubble year? Uh, not the bubble year, but 2021. No, 2019. Yeah, 2019. Okay, dang. Uh, the 2021 Clippers. Correct. The 04 Timberwolves. Since 2000, set since 2007. Is that no? What since since, since 2000, there are seven teams. But right. I actually. Okay, never made it. I think I missed so the there's gotta, only six. So you guys so the actually got to come go. off. The, the Trailblazers got to come off that, that list. Because they made the conference finals in 2000. Mm. And they made it again. You Yeah, that's right. Correct. They made it game with game. I, I, I messed up with that. It's, is, it's not Harden's time. Rockets, is it? No. They no, made they it. went twice because they made it with Dwight once. Mm. That's right. 2015. Um, is it uh, – I think it's Darren Williams in the Jazz in what, like 09? Not 09, but that's the right team. 08. <laughs> Not 08. 2010. Oh, bro, how okay, can No, it was 07. It <laughs> was the, ja- the Jazz team is the You're team right. that awaited the winner of that brawl between Phoenix and, and San Antonio. That is correct. All right, there you go, guys. We took it down from 7 to 5 because of some error on the uh, yeah. question asking, but you cleaned it up. Great, gentlemen. No, we, like we, sometimes on this show, we have to clean up after Carson, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm an amateur. Sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, man. This is what comes with being a nerd. Nerds. I know. I get I, I get pushed in lockers, man, when I yeah. do the slightest oh, little thing love, wrong. Love nerds. Everybody yeah. loses their minds. I had to climb I had to climb out of a trash can before this show, man. <laughs> All right, guys. Five players have won both an NBA finals and an NCAA title in back to back seasons. Can you guys at least name three of them? Won the, won, the, won, won the tournament and won the championship the very next year. All yes, right, sir. so let's see here. That's Magic. He's one of them. Correct. Magic. Won the tournament call. and won the, won the NBA championship the very the next very year. The very next uh, year. Let's see. Uh, hmm, let's Kareem see. wins in his second year. That's so he doesn't ball. work. Uh-huh. Let's see. Got to do it as a rookie. Three guys. Do it as a rookie. Yeah, you guys have four more guys to choose from. I only need you to name me two more. Okay. I'm thinking way back. Oh, my God. Bill Russell and Casey Jones. Casey Jones I actually don't have here. I think they both. Or, no, maybe Casey Jones came out a year after Russell, but they were on the same USF team. They were on the same USF team. Uh, There's a really recent guy here, actually. Okay, interesting. Somebody who came from a powerhouse program and was dropped onto a good team. Yeah, I mean, we really like this guy. All of us here, cumulatively, I know. Just a dog, man. Just just makes the effort plays, you know? Real hustler, real real grimy kind of kid. Grimy? Yeah, he, he's just a workhorse, man. He just he just does the dirty work. All right, I'm just going to not focus on what you're saying to me and think about people who make sense because <laughs> I don't know who I would describe as grimy. Oh, what you call it? Um, I know exactly who we're talking about. Christian Brown and Denver. It's Christian oh. Brown. Oh! Yeah, Christian Brown and Denver. Great call. Yeah. So Magic, Christian Brown, and Denver. Uh, and Bill Russell. See. So you guys got everybody. The other two guys to have done this, Billy Thompson and Henry Bibby. Yes, oh, sir. Henry Bibby. Wow. Of course, Henry Bibby. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Bibby yep. was – he was actually solid, but I did not realize that he did that. Okay, let's go. So Casey, did he come out a year after Russell? He did. Yeah. Okay, he was in 58. All right. Another Western Conference playoff question. And I'm going to give you guys three shots at this one, because if not, you can just run wild and guess every Western Conference team. Which team did Kobe's Lakers eliminate from the playoffs the most times? And we're considering when you say Kobe's Lakers, too, you mean just when Kobe was on the roster, right? Yeah, correct. But this is, yeah, back back to his rookie year. Man, I want to say... Don't make it an official guess. Just you're spitballing with me I, now. I, yeah, yeah, I'm spitballing. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm leaning Phoenix for some reason, man. Just because Phoenix, I'm, but Phoenix got bounced by San Antonio a lot too. You know, I think they only beat Phoenix in 2010. 
might be right. Um, oh no, no, yeah, because they lost to Phoenix before that. Back to back seasons. Yeah, no they got swept also. once, and then the crazy year where Kobe put him up three one, and then quit in the second half of Game Seven. Don't say that out loud. Do <laughs> not say that out loud. Somebody <laughs> might hear you. <laughs> they went up against San Antonio a lot. They went up against. Ooh, maybe it's Dallas. Maybe it's Dallas. Let's let's think about Dallas then. Was Portland? I mean, was Portland I actually good don't in the early think it's too. I, I don't. I don't think it's that. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think it's Dallas either. I think it's going to be a team that they ran into, you know, in that early part of the decade too. Yeah, because they were. Yeah, because they were actually like making deep playoff runs five years in a row there. I don't think it's going to be Sacramento because Sacramento didn't go to the playoffs enough. You're going to think I'm crazy, but I actually I'm just going to come out with a guess. I think it's the San Antonio Spurs. And you beat the Spurs be three the times. Spurs. That is tied for the second most. Okay. So we have two more guesses. Mm-hmm. We got Portland on the table. They didn't beat the like did they beat a Brandon Roy team? Maybe in like 2010, 9, 8. You might be on to something. You know they took on some mellow teams too in Denver, but I I feel like there's just gonna be some crossover yeah, I think they only with beat those Denver early once. teams. Yeah. Minnesota gets bounced every year. And remember, they'd have to be they'd have to lose more than three times. That's crazy to the Kobe Lakers. It's a high bar. That is a very high bar. I was like pretty confident about it being San Antonio, which goes to show you how stupid I am. No, I mean that's a it's a good thought. I think OG knows. <laughs> of course he does. Of course he does. Uh what do you think, Logan? Where are you at? I'm leaning right now, I'm leaning Portland, I feel like. Okay, let's make that our second guess. Portland. Portland five times. Let's go. But Jesus. here's here's the thing. I think most people think of the Kobe Lakers towards like the late 2000s when he was like far and away the guy, but they beat them in all three of the title runs. And in his first two years, they also beat Portland in the playoffs. So five times in a six year span, they knocked out the Blazers. Mm, Jeez. Yeah, because right, they beat them in 98, 99. Yeah. It's got it's got to be a record. I feel like the same team five times in six years. But well done, gentlemen. You got there. So two so, nice so job, Logan. two things. And number one, the nerds got it wrong because San Antonio <laughs> lost to them four times. Oh, they four they times. Lose. They lost to them in 01. They lost to them in Carson. 02. Get it together. <laughs> they, lost to them, they lost to them in 04. And then they lost to them in the West Finals in 08. 4-1. OG, you are correct. I apologize. OG is cooking. Are we going to have to sift through this entire video and double check all of Carson's questions? <laughs> no, because OG, is our, he's our live fact checker. <laughs> and and Dude, to Jason's he... point, in 99, the Lakers didn't beat the Trailblazers. The exit of the Trailblazers lost to San Antonio in the West Finals that year. Right. They swept up. But that was, that was the only year that they lost to somebody no, other than the Lakers the in those, in those mm-hmm. six years. 97, 98, 2000 yeah. through 02, they lost to the Lakers every time. Dude, who needs, ba- who needs, who needs basketball <laughs> reference when you got OG, man? For real. Hey, man. All I right. Top of the door. Portland fans <laughs> must hate the Lakers, man. <laughs> Just like you know, that, that shot that Damian Lillard hit against, against Houston – that was the first time they had been out the first round of the playoffs in 14 years. Wow. That's crazy. Since they lost in the Western Conference Championship. That was the first time, which goes back, Jason, to how quickly one thing can change everything. That game seven where they're down 15 and the Lakers come back and they end up winning, the Lakers go on to win the NBA championship five more times. Mm-hmm. The Portland Trailblazers don't get out the first round of the playoffs for 14 years. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. The Western Conference run, the one that they went to the conference finals, is one of my favorite Blazers teams, though, because that was the year, if I remember correctly, Dame just freaking obliterates Russ and PG in the Thunder. That was the bad shot game. Yeah. And oh, then, then, <laughs> then, <laughs> then Dame, Dame just hands the baton to CJ, and CJ just completely takes over that uh, series against the Nuggets, remember? Yeah, and remember CJ that. has... And CJ has that incredible moment on the road where he just Game takes seven. over. That's like that is. Can you think of a better individual performance from a player who has his lowest standing in the league as CJ McCollum in that game? 
Like when you factor oh, in the yeah. stakes, because oh, I think yeah. that was a game seven, wasn't it? It was, yeah, game seven. Seven. On the road. It was a game seven yeah. on the road in the conference semis, a dude who is resoundingly considered outside of the top 30 in the NBA. And he legitimately just turned into Kobe Bryant on both ends of the floor for one game. He had to chase down block in that game. <laughs> Which goes back to your original logic, Jason, when you talk about coaching, because if you remember, there's a reason why he got going because Damian Lillard was terrible in that game from a shoot. Standpoint. Yeah. He was terrible the whole he- series. Yeah. No. Well, game six. Well, well, nobody really talks about game six. The reason why there was a game seven because there was a game six. Can Damian Lillard with forty in that game and ended up yeah, getting yeah. The game that's a good seven. point. That's but good, yeah. but with game seven, Damian Lillard was terrible in that game. But nobody talks about the fact that C.J. McCullough, for lack of a better term, made a beeline to Jamal Murray's ass and was frying <laughs> him. I think they went like because you talk, you, Jason. You talk about coaching. I'm talking about a guy who I think he ran the same play for, for he ran the same play for CJ like four straight trips yeah. and we're in the meat and potatoes of the game instead yeah. of okay we're gonna do this we're gonna do that no it was just give the ball to CJ let him work and yeah, he it can't worked guard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it worked it absolutely worked there was no we don't have to do any like what you're doing with Joker where you gotta where you gotta get some action off of him no get a ball to CJ let him work and Damian got out the way and said I'm three for eighteen I'm terrible tonight. Go to work, mm-hmm. and he did it. Short re- that's that game to me is the the piece of film I'd show to anybody if I wanted to demonstrate the value of of mid range pull up jump shooting. Because it just Money like in a, <laughs> in a game like that, it's just like if you got to sh- because like when a, the thing with mid range pull up jump shooting is it's different from three point shooting in the sense that three point shooting when you really get going you still miss half of them. But like with mid range pull up shooting, when you really get it dialed in, you can make six, seven in a row. Like they're 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 just an easy shot when you're dialed mm-hmm. in. And like right. and and yeah, like he, he just got it going in that game and no one could guard him. And think about how much that opens up the game too. When you get that mid range going, and then now the big guys in the paint, they can post up even more, especially during mm-hmm. that time. The big guys that's why Jordan was so good. Because Jordan had a money mid range game. Everybody talks yeah. about Jordan, his ability to get to the basket. Jordan, 15 to 18 feet, he was fantastic. That's mm-hmm. why, he, and KD is another one of those guys. Mm-hmm. That's why they were so good. And then, as much as I, and I'm a big Jason Tatum guy, I'm telling you guys, if Jason Tatum can get that 15 to 18 foot in his game, he's going to be the best player in the game. Good if thing he he's going in the in wrong direction game. on that department. Yeah, he sort of oh. took it out. <laughs> Jason, when yeah. did, when, 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 am I going crazy when I watch him and I'm thinking, like, when did you turn into James Harden? It's either at the long ball line or it's at the rim. What's the deal? Mm-hmm. Just go, What's just go on? to, just go to watch the shots he took in the playoffs in 2022 versus the shots he took in 2023. It's like ridiculous how different he was attacking. Like he was executing the Bucks and Heat in big games with mid range pull up jump shooting, which he just, right. just he just doesn't do anymore. It, it's crazy to me, but I, I digress. I mean, I think it's because he got so much criticism for that, man. Yeah, I, which is like, oh gosh, like. I I will never understand that specifically, like like allowing that public, uh, especially since and I mean I'm I'm sure we've all seen this and you guys are not the nerds I'm referring to here, thank but there you, is another kind of NBA nerd that um that is completely obsessed with trying to turn the game of basketball into a science instead of an art and I think, and I think that that group in particular has done some damage to some players in their careers. I, I talked about this in my player rankings, but the biggest what if I had for James Harden's career yeah. was if he would have come up with somebody other than Daryl Morey, because like same type of deal. He used to have a lot of variety in his game and he trimmed it all out. And James, uh, Jason Tatum's in the process of doing the same thing. And, but here's the thing, like you go back and it's like, he's averaging 30 on 60% true shooting. It's hard for him to look at it and be like, it's not working, but yeah. it's just, it's just the, I can't tell you how many times I'd see him in an isolation situation in this year's playoff run where like the defender is pressing up on that pull up three and trying to funnel him into help. And he just doesn't have any idea what to do after mm-hmm. that. And it, and it's like and it's like man like you've had success in these situations before you're big and strong like you're being guarded by Caleb Martin like take his ass to the post like like this <laughs> this guy cannot yeah. guard you down there it's it's crazy to me but or I, I, or I'm sorry to interrupt you but or I'm watching him on Christmas and he's got Drew Holiday on him and he's in the pinch post and he's right there at the at the elbow and he's a it's a two dribble to the left pull up over him right in his face and I'm thinking to myself 15 feet I'm like you can do that all night. Yeah. You can do that all night long. He yeah. can't cover you in that area because number one, you're six foot nine. He's six four. 
That's what this is. So he can't cover you. But instead, he drags himself back out to the long ball line, to your point, because that's what the analytics say that you can do because it's a, it, you get more points there. When in reality, how much more does this open up the game when you're 17 feet, 15 feet, playing in the mid post? How much better is your game when you're playing in that area? How much more do you expand everybody's offense in addition mm -hmm. to yours if you do that? Yeah. I love that take from you, Jason. I also think you're totally right, OG. And I think that it's tough to overstate how impactful versatility is when you are in a playoff scenario and your ability to just turn to multiple avenues of offense. And also, I mean, in terms of fitting in alongside other great talent, right? When you are playing an overwhelmingly stagnant ball dominant style that has never worked at the highest level, like maybe with the exception of magic was ball dominant but he was also the greatest playmaker we've ever seen. It's a totally different thing. And he was very versatile as a scorer, his ability mm -hmm. to attack out of pick and roll out of the post, all these different things. Harden, I mean, if you're just running super high volume pick and roll in isolation every possession and you're going to get to your same few bread and butter shots, the defenses can sit on over a seven game series. And obviously the math tells you that having a really high free throw rate is great for your efficiency. But if that comes as a product of grifting, if it's not a product of actually aggressively attacking the basket, playoff fouls, then that doesn't scale. Like there's nothing about Harden's game that ever scaled as well mm -hmm. in the playoffs as in the regular season. And I think he's become pretty overrated by some. And I think it's exactly the type of people you're talking about, Jason, like people who think like Daryl Morey, because I see him thrown into conversations as like one of the five greatest offensive players ever. And <sighs> I just think that that completely neglects the context. I've seen conversations recently about who is a better offensive player between him and Kobe and I saw a significant majority of people on this one poll going with James Harden. And I think that I'm relatively low on Kobe all time, but also he's just flat out a superior offensive engine because of the versatility of his attack and the constant attention that that demands, how that reshapes a defense. It's just different. Like it's not just about high scoring and high playmaking volume. There's context and there's things that translate better to the playoffs and Harden does not pass that test compared to other all time great players. But That's I liked that take from you a lot. I, I think that I think that people in the analytics front kind of conflate the two takes to like me saying that mid-range jump shooting is valuable doesn't mean I want Jason Tatum to take 10 of them a game. Of course. No. Like and like no. and like when you really like to me the the shot value stuff becomes way more value valuable from the standpoint of like hey like yeah, if you catch the ball on the wing and you get a decent look at a catch and shoot three, you should take it. If you're a good shooter, like you should be gunning for catch and shoot opportunities yeah. that are good. Or, or when you do have like, yeah, if you're coming off of a ball screen and you have a good look at a three, take that before you take the pull up 17 footer, if it's there, but on the half dozen or so possessions, a game where things break down and you have to create your own shot. Those are the situations where I think showing a willingness to go to the mid range makes you harder to, to guard. And like, 100%. again, we always talk about like with offensive ratings, the gaps between elite and terrible is like maybe 111 points per 100 possessions to like 118 points per 100 possessions. We're talking, we're splitting hairs here between good and great. And like, to me, that's the difference. It's like, like turning the five or six broke breakdown possessions and the 10 to 15 ISO post up pick and roll possessions into more variety could mm -hmm. lead you to getting an extra two tenths of a point per possession in a playoff series there, which could be the different. And every time we look at a playoff, a playoff series, they always end up coming down. It's like, you're saying, Oh gee, it's game six, Portland, Denver. It's like, there's always like two or three games in the series that come down to a couple of buckets. And like, that's where that ability to be the guy that can, that can get to a shot anywhere on the floor versus just in two spots brings a, a ton of versatility. And Carson, you hit the nail on the head. It's literally about repetition. It's like, if I, if I ask Carson to guard me in one-on-one -on -one tomorrow, I'm cooking his ass. But yeah. if he does it seven days in a <laughs> row, like by the seventh day, He's going to be I'm like, get, I'm okay, getting a stop. Jason. I'm getting a stop in there somewhere. <laughs> no, but you're right. Cause you're going to be like, okay, Jason likes to out of this high hesitation out of his left hand. He likes to do this. He likes to do that. Like you start to get a feel. That's what happens in these playoff series. It's like, okay, I've got, I've got uh, Andre Guadala or Harrison Barnes or Clay Thompson guarding James Harden for a playoff series. Game one, my favorite thing to look at is go to 2018 and look at how well James Harden played in game one of every single series that year. Mm. And then look at what happened after. It's all about repetition and becoming easier to guard versus when you have the versatility, you can go to different spots at different times in the series and yeah. you're never repeating yourself, essentially.
which, by the way, nobody talks about the psychological edge that you have on the defense when you're that versatile. So if yeah. I'm dealing with a guy who's got a money mid-range game, but he can also knock down the long ball and he can finish at the rim with the best of them, now I'm guessing even more as a defender mm-hmm. because I got to give up something at some point, yeah. right? I can't just let you shoot threes all night, but I can't just let you get to the rim but I can't stop you from doing this stuff mm-hmm. either. So what am I going to defer to the most? What am I going to do my best to try to slow down the most? Well, if I can stop him or if I can slow him down in the mid range, that might be a good thing. But if I can stop him getting to the rim, that might be a good thing. That's why I'm not a big fan of true shooting. And the reason why I'm not a big fan of true shooting, because you can take a lot of bad shots. I've seen guys go eight for 26 and then they 13 for 14 from the strike. So it evens out. I'm like, wait a minute. First of all, this dude took a lot of bad shots. He didn't go eight for 26 because he was missing good shots. No, he was taking a lot of bad shots, but the fact that he got to the strike as much as he did. And the fact that the, the whistle was kind to him, it made it look like, you know, his true shooting quote unquote percentage was better when it really wasn't. Mm -hmm. I think my take on true shooting percentage is it's an imperfect measurement of efficiency. There's no question, but it is much better than the historical metrics. Like using raw field goal percentage to me misses more of the picture because of how disproportionately Mm -hmm. efficient shooting 40% from three is versus shooting 40% from the field. Right. And I agree with you. There are games where it's like, you may look like your efficiency is fine within that game. You didn't play a good game. But I also do think overall rewarding guys who get to the line at a high level, it is an efficient form of offense that you can't account for with just field goal percentage or effective field goal percentage. So I see what you're saying. I still think compared to the alternatives, it's a good measure, but it's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. And that's why you can't just look at numbers and say, this is how good a basketball player is. That's the reality of all this. There's so many things. It's a dynamic, living, breathing game that is different in the playoffs, significantly so than in the regular season. And every matchup is different. And I think that we can all agree on that. And that's why I did a I did a thing on true shooting percentage. And and I the big red flag for me is when there's a massive gap between field goal percentage and true shooting shooting percentage in the regular season. Like mm-hmm. that when you see guys where like like their field goal percentage is 44, but their shooting percentage is 60. That's yeah, always the it. kind it's of guy. Tra- it's Trey. Trey. Young. That that's where <laughs> yeah, or or James Harden is another great example of that. But like when I see guys like that, I always that to me the gap between field goal percentage and true shooting percentage is the is a clear indicator of how much you rely on long range jump shooting and a whistle to get to your points. And so like I, I like if a guy has a high true shooting percentage in the postseason, I typically look at that as a positive. But when I see a guy in the regular season have a high true true shooting percentage, but his field goal percentage is low, I start to worry about that translating. Yeah. And we've just seen so many examples of that. Hundred percent. You have to be a great shot maker. There's no question. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a great offensive player, you have to be a great shot maker. And I think gotta that put that's, the ball in the basket for real. Gotta put the yeah. ball in the basket. All right, sure. Logan. I think we're on to the last question now, aren't we? This is uh, all I got uh, left for you guys. What player has the most All Star selections without an All NBA selection, and that includes first team, second team, and third team? So no All NBA selections whatsoever. This Joe is Johnson. A great question. No, no, no. On the all-star team not iso difference. joe that's a Never. that's a good guess i believe joe was all nba at least once though because he's a seven-time mm-hmm. all-star uh and for context from 1946 that's when they introduced the all nba teams to 1988 mm-hmm. there were just two teams in 1988 they introduced yeah. three teams and yeah so okay that plays oh, so, so, so a guy so a guy so a guy who made who's, who's got the most all-star without making an all NBA team. Well, that's simple for me. The, the, the guy who shouldn't be in the hall of fame, that's Lenny Wilkins. Made oh my team gosh. OG. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Made the, OG made all, from made the, the top team row. Nine time. Never made the, never made all league team. Not one time. And I am an time. advocate just so you guys know, I'm an advocate of being an all league performer. I take that very seriously. The fact that you never made the all NBA team one time, I got a problem with that. <laughs> Not a huge problem. I love, I love that, this dude. take. I love this take. Off the dome. Let's go. Lenny, never all NBA. Wow. Mm-hmm. How about that? Pretty great basketball career overall, though, when you consider he's top 15 coach of all time. Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. That's that's fantastic work, OG. Ending on a high note there. Last question for you guys, Logan and Jason. Can you name me every player to start a game for the 2011 Heat? in the playoffs 
<laughs> oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so we obviously have LeBron Wade Bosch. Yeah. Uh, BB started a game. Um, Joel yeah. Anthony started a game. Udonis Haslam started a game. Haslam actually um, did not that year. Haslam never oh. started? Okay. Did not start um, the game, interestingly. Jose Calderon? No, not Jose Calderon. Was that? Not Jose Calderon. The Carlos Arroyo. Carlos Arroyo. Thank you. I got him confused. Not Carlos Arroyo. Arroyo. Not, not Arroyo. Arroyo. Chalmers. Chalmers started one game. Okay, so we're at so we're at Bibby Chalmers, LeBron Wade, Bosch, Anthony, just one to go. Mm, the great Jarvis Varnado. How could I forget? You know? I'm calling a technical foul on even bringing that name. <laughs> up. Is it? Is it? Uh, is it? Is it Big Z? It's Big Eric Z. Eric Dampier. Dude. No, Big Z started eight games in that playoff run. And by the what? way, what I forgot this. Mike Bibby started twenty. He started yeah. every game he played in, in those playoffs. Averaged three point seven points per game and shot twenty eight percent from the field. Garbage. I remember. I remember Trash. Bibby being terrible. I remember get Bibby, Bibby being off. Terrible. Get Bibby off the floor. Get him off. The I mean that. Get him off. The that is heinous <laughs> stuff, dude. Get that twenty eleven team, of course. I mean, LeBron was just flat out bad in the finals. But I will say, I think people overrate that supporting cast because of the additions that were made ahead of the 2012 season bringing in the bad EAs and eventually the Ray Allens of the world like the supporting casts are much better in 12 through 14 versus 11 like for they sure they might, they might talk about that team like James jumped on a bomb squad they won 46 games the year before. I know. <laughs> that's it they won 46 games what were they the seven seed the year before that Dwayne yeah. Wade's taking Jermaine O'Neal and Carlos Arroyo and Joel Anthony and Rafa Austin. He's taking them to the playoffs. They 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 were a poorly constructed team in the sense that they were like kind of a too big roster with uh, Bosch not stretching far out beyond 15 feet and Wade and LeBron both being downhill guys. Mm -hmm. um, they the other thing too is like I really this is why it's fair to put it as a black mark on on LeBron's resume. He legitimately was awesome in the first three rounds. Like, off the charts good. Mm -hmm. uh, people, mm -hmm. like, it's funny because that series is looked at as, as LeBron demonstrating that he's not clutch. He was the most clutch player through the first three rounds. So he, so he was second in clutch points during that playoff run. Um, it was pretty deadly in those situations. Famously lit up the Bulls and game five of the conference finals. It's just like LeBron literally fell apart in that series. There's no way around it. And I think I've never seen what was it? Like um, what was it? Um, I'm blanking on his name, former Raptors coach, then Pistons coach. Um, Dwayne Casey. Dwayne Casey, I think was the guy for the Mavs who constructed that defense. And, and if you watch that series too, like they, they really did bottle them up and try to bait them into taking pull up jump shots that they didn't want to take. And like, it was, my my biggest regret, uh, as someone who was rooting for LeBron in that series, is I wish LeBron would have spent more time guarding Dirk, because mm. I think uh, they wasted him a lot on Jason Terry in that series. Uh -huh. And like, Bosch just like, I'm not sure there's ever been as definitive an ass kicking on a on a positional peer the way that D Dirk did Chris Bosh in that him. series. Destroyed honestly, Destroyed. honestly, the only one that's close is maybe Jokic versus AD this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, I mean, I'm talking like positional peer, like Bosh got absolutely barbecued in that series. Uh -huh. Like just had absolutely no chance to guard. 100%. Uh, yeah. Game six, like he was game six in the, in the fourth quarter. I was rewatching it the other day. Like he gave him, gave it to him every which way, just gave it to him every which way. I didn't really see a lot of – well, two things. Number one, watching James those last three games of the series was like watching a dance performance that you had gone over and then you get out there and the guy does the complete opposite of what you went over. <laughs> and I'm watching James and I'm watching this guy and I'm like, who is this? Because that's complete opposite of what we went over. Who was this guy? But mm -hmm. then watching Chris watching Chris Bosch go up against Dirk Nowitzki and watching how Dirk Nowitzki just slowly – it was almost like a like how a python squeezes a guy to death. It wasn't mm -hmm. like he just poured it on him. It was just slow. And after a while, you just recognize that you can't stop this guy. You can't do anything to stop this guy. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And I know where they're going down the stretch. There was a part of me that wanted to talk about how I felt like roles weren't established. But if that was true, then 
why wasn't that the case in the first three series? Because James went to Derrick Rose, who was the league MVP, after making the adjustment where they got smoked in game one by 20. James moves over to Derrick Rose, and now everything you do, I do, except I'm six foot nine. I'm bigger, faster, mm-hmm. and stronger than you are, and I'm defending you. I'm keeping you away from the basket, which was Derrick Rose's bread and butter. But then he does this against the Dallas Mavericks, where he can't keep Jason Terry away from the basket. He can't keep he can't keep JJ Barrera away from the basket. I'm thinking, who is this guy that I'm watching? Because this ain't the same dude that I saw in the first three in, in in the first three series. This is completely different. I thought I was in the Matrix, to be honest with you guys. He, he <laughs> legit crumbled under the pressure of the situation. There's no other way to put it. I, yeah. I I look at it as a very important part of LeBron's career because, like, I don't think he dominates the way he did from 2012 to 2020 unless he gets embarrassed. Because there was a game. You know, it's funny because we think of LeBron as a little bit of a showman now. But, like, if you watch LeBron in 2011, like, he was showing off to an even greater extent. Like, he was feeling himself. And he got humbled like not many stars have in their careers. And I think it was a very important moment for him. Uh, But, like, like, last thing I'll say on the Dirk front, like, I watched every bucket he made in that playoff run the other day. The sheer number of like, oh my God, there's no way he's making that shots that went in. We're just like, yeah. like, cause the, his, his whole, like, oh, you're smothering me, but I'm just going to lean back and shoot a rainbow <laughs> thing was completely ridiculous. Yeah. Like I, I, I totally, it was kind of crazy going back down memory lane and watching him. Cause I had totally forgotten how helpless you felt guarding yeah. Dirk Nowitzki, but I like the best, series. the best defenders against Dirk were always <laughs> like stronger wings. And that's why I thought about LeBron because like he could have really disrupted Dirk's base in a way that not other, not many other wings can like from a coaching standpoint, I'm surprised they didn't go in that direction more. Right. I, I can't watch that series, Logan. I can't, <laughs> I, I can't, I, I can't watch this, this, just, just from the sheer point of how bad he was those last three games, just, just watching him and how bad he was and completely just turning into a different player mm-hmm. where it was just a meltdown. So the shots that he was getting, the year before that, when they were playing against Boston, and the year before that, when they were playing against Orlando in the playoffs, they expected him to be – they they were baiting him into being that guy. That role wasn't really established. But then I'm thinking to myself, he's not even trying to do any of this stuff. So these schemes can't be that much different than what was going on. So it was, it was like watching the star just melt down right in front of you. I can't watch the series. The last time I watched it, I had to turn it off because I was like, this is this is horrific. <laughs> this guy is terrible. I think I think Jason's right though, man. I think that set the table for for the beast that would come out of LeBron. You know, the like I think it just made him hungrier, dude. And oh, I remember dude. I was rooting hard against LeBron in that series too, because I remember when Dirk got sick, uh him and D. Wade were making fun of Dirk Cloudy. for uh, for having the flu, man. And I yeah. I thought that was hella disrespectful. So mm-hmm. Is it, That's are you one of the main to... reasons. That's one of the main reasons why uh-huh. I feel like I do about James because of how he was able to persevere, how he was able to turn it around. Most guys in a situation like that, they would go to pieces, and you may never hear from them again. Mm-hmm. For him to come back, improve his mid range game, improve yeah. his IQ, right? Not only improve his IQ, the conversation that he had with Dwayne Wade, which was the which was basically the tipping point, where Wade told him that in order for us to get to where we got to go, you got to be you. Don't worry about me. You have to be you. Because if they win that series, Dwayne Wade wins the finals MVP. And he mm-hmm. wins it going away. That's it's not actually my – Wade, Wade being so good in that series – because Wade was so good mm, yeah. in that series. Was, like, like ga- game three was one of the better finals individual performances that you'll see from a, 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 a perimeter player in NBA history. Like, yeah. Wade – Wade was ridiculous, and I think LeBron took a back seat. And then mm-hmm. when when Wade cooled off a little bit and he needed help, LeBron just had no rhythm or confidence, and it was it was basically right. over at that point. Right. And that's why, and like I said, Logan, that's why I feel the way I do about him, because his ability to persevere, his ability to come back better than what he was in the past shows a lot about what kind of player he is, because mm-hmm. a lot of guys would just fall to pieces. A lot of guys would just go away and just basically – you know, faded into obscurity. He came back better. And to watch him in that 2012 series when they are down 3-2. Because if they lose to Boston, that big three is over. They're breaking that mm-hmm. unit up. We're never going to see from them again. Oh, LeBron but, saved him. <laughs> yeah, 100%. They're, they're breaking that unit up. And the stuff that he was doing in 2009 that, and in 2008, he was doing that in 2012, set up the better version of himself. Mm-hmm. And that's why he just became 
better. You know, and, and a lot of people, they, they talk to me a lot of me, why are you such a big LeBron fan? And the last thing I'm going to say on this is, guys, it was 2013. James was in, he just finished year 10. He had just come off winning the league MVP for the fourth time in five years. Won the finals MVP and the NBA championship in back-to-back seasons. I wouldn't even entertain the conversation with him and Jordan at that time. I wasn't even interested in it. It took me, it took me years before I was thinking, like we get to 2015 when he takes that Cleveland team who Chris, who Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving never been in the playoffs. Not one time when they're in the playoffs, he takes them to the NBA championship without Kyrie Irving in the Eastern Conference Championship. He missed two of those four games. He mm-hmm. didn't play the whole series, right? And I'm thinking, I'm starting to get back on the James train. Like, should I be watching this guy a little bit more? And then in 16, when he does what he does, mm-hmm. I'm thinking to myself, this might be a conversation. I'm not saying that it, I'm, I'm going there, but maybe we might have to start talking about this. And then we get to what he did in 18. Now it's becoming serious where I'm thinking, is he better than him? Wait a minute. Am I am, am I bugging out? This is and then what he did in 19 when they when he was with that Lakers team that was in 10th place the year before that. And they played the Golden State Warriors on Christmas. Logan, there are two games out of first place. I remember sitting down with my lady going, I think he's better than Jordan. <laughs> I think he might be better. I'm not she her jaw dropped because she I, I was a J guy. <laughs> And I'm watching this dude, and I go, I think he might be better. Oh my goodness! And that's when I was that that that's when I, it took me yeah. a lot. It took me a lot of years. Mm-hmm. I, I, it like I said in 2013, I wasn't even interested in. I wouldn't even entertain the conversation. No, absolutely not. No, I don't think you could have at that point. I think LeBron had to continue to, I mean, develop stylistically. Like I think that the second Cleveland version of him is the best offensive player that he was in a different style. Yeah. And I mean, obviously the LA title is next level and the overall longevity. I'm at the point where I don't think there's a wrong answer to the goat debate. Mm-hmm. I think it depends on what you value. I do think MJ peaks slightly higher. I don't think we have mm-hmm. time to get all the way into right, that right, right now, but I mean, if you value longevity, mm-hmm. I don't even, I don't really don't know how you could argue Jordan. Like if that's the most important thing to you or however you weight those things, I think you can come to either conclusion pretty easily. I did a full, I did a full LeBron MJ thing at the beginning of today's show. It's the one that's on YouTube right now. Yeah. (laughs) Just randomly. It's the first time I've ever done it. (laughs) My logic has always been, if you can, it could be James, Jordan, Jabbar. It could be Jabbar, Jordan, James. It could be Jordan, Mm -hmm. Jabbar, James, which because all three of those guys have a legit case in being the best ever. For sure. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for giving us so much of your time. This Mm -hmm. has been a ton of fun. Glad that we got to do this. Big shout out to both of you guys. Check out OG at Chilltown32 on TikTok. Check out Jason, of course. I'm sure a lot of you guys, if you're watching on the volume YouTube page, you probably already watched Jason. But check out Hoops Tonight everywhere. It is fantastic basketball content. And if you guys want to check us out, then we are on the volume YouTube page as well. If you subscribe, we are also across audio platforms. You can get some of our merch. You see, we have the flags behind us. We've got hats. We've got shirts. We've got hoodies. You can find all of that at thevolume.com. And you can follow us across social Instagram and TikTok at nerd sesh and Twitter at nerd underscore sesh. Thank you so much to you guys. Any last thoughts that we want to get off here before we wrap it up? Nerds. OG. <laughs> OG, it was great to meet you. Absolutely. Uh, it was I had a blast talking basketball with you the last couple hours. Absolutely, Boys, brother. it was good to see you guys as, again as well. And I'm looking forward to talking lots of hoops this season. Absolutely. My, my, I'll, I'll let my man, my man Ken, my man Ken Cole, he's a big fan of yours. I'll let him know I met you today. He, he, he digs you. He's the one who turned me on to you, as a matter of fact. He really digs you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I appreciate that. Out. Yeah. I, for one, Cannot wait for basketball to come back. I love the all-time stuff. I love the trivia. Mm-hmm. But it is going to be a lot of fun to have basketball mm-hmm. every night. So, yes, appreciate sir. you guys. Again, as always, I have been Carson Brabber. I have been Logan Camden. And this was Nerd Sash. <laughs>